So um, yeah, the, the, the difficulties of teaching at home, you know, they're, they're, they're multifaceted. And I'll have my daughter just kind of walk in and like you know, pop her head into the camera and I'm like, oh, excuse me, guys. Um, uh, my where, son where, is where, running where around we? with his underwear, just in his underwear. <laughs> Hey Ned, how are you? Hello Manny, how are you? I'm okay. How, how's your semester been? Well, it's a little strange because I'm not teaching, but uh, so far so good. I know it's been kind of difficult and rough for studio-based classes. Um, you want to maybe tell us a little bit about what it's like teaching a printmaking class? Yeah, I mean last semester obviously we went into teaching in the middle of the semester. So one, we knew the students. Number two, we, we had already become versed with some of the techniques and, and, and even definitions of what things are and were able to see and, and also work hands on. So teaching a printmaking course was a little bit easier and or different. So as you mentioned, you know, a lot of our classes in the ACM department are our lab based or studio based right. classes. So we are physically there. Um, one addition to that issue is in, in a printmaking course, you need to have presses. That's right. Nice. And so my last spring, my, my letterpress, advanced letterpress printmaking class just went, everything I was thinking went out the window. It's like, right. you know, completely unprepared because it is so physical and it is such a physical process. Uh, and that's where the, the presses came in. I belong to a group of educators that are also letterpress enthusiasts, and they had come up with a solution of making these little kits, these portable presses. And it's at that point that we all thought, you know, that we would be able to buy some, test it out, and see if it worked for the fall semester. Which was brilliant, which I really appreciate that you had, had, had come to that realization that, hey, maybe we can try these presses. So yeah, the, the, the fact that you saw these and, and realized that they, they had potential and then we purchased them is fantastic because what it did was it, it, it now allows us to have these mini presses that the students can take home with them and they can physically print their prints. Yeah, and I, I don't context. know if this is worth talking about, but you know, the chancellor's office was behind this idea. They understood that a studio-based class taught remotely is kind of an awkward thing. And so they were really helpful in getting us the 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 funds, you know, coming out of the student fees, but getting that that request uh, through. And you know, it 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 kind of everything fell into pieces. Um, and, and it wasn't until we saw the presses in their little kits and started building them that I, I dawned on me like how amazing this opportunity is for our students, right? short term and long term. Right, again, and what I'm impressed with in terms of the presses is one, they help us to mechanically print things. They are also extremely accurate and durable which I think is, is, is um, and actually even beyond that, flexible right. in terms of, so in, as you know, in printmaking, um, you're doing the letterpress course. I'm teaching a more general printmaking course. Right. So we're dealing with making mono prints. We're dealing with making linoleum block prints. We're making etchings and or dry point, which is more of digging into a surface. Um, and we're doing the, the letterpress, which is printing on the surface. So you, you're looking at all the different processes, whereas if I was teaching it, I'd probably just concentrate on type and image and letterpress. Right, right, right. Which is what the presses were made for. Right. What I have become impressed with is the fact that I can now use them in the context of doing intaglio, which again means I have to exert pressure, as you know, onto the paper in order for the, 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 the paper to be pressed into the recessions where the ink is, so then we can get an image. Right. I wasn't sure whether we were gonna be able to do that. Were we only gonna be able to use them for letterpress? No, like they're, they're, they're flexible. And their, their flexibility is, I mean, just because they're portable, I think that's what makes them even long-term, even more amazing, right? Because. Yes. Up until this point, we had two presses and I had limited student enrollments of 12 students. 12 to 13 students. And they sat around, you know, a lot of them would sit around waiting to get on the press. Long term, now we have 12 more. Uh, so as someone is working on the more robust, larger presses, the Vandercooks, the rest of the students can be, you know, 
in the peripheral working on the presses themselves. Yeah, which is great because now, as you know, we initially thought, okay, we're getting these as provisional presses. And then we, we came to the realization, wait a minute, we can only have 13 kids in the class. Um, we have two presses. Now we can have those present in our classroom situation when we're back live and we can do more projects right. faster. More students, more projects. I mean, we're, we're ordering, what, 13 more? 12 yeah, so we'll more. have 25. So we'll have a total of 25-ish. Right. And the, the, the kind of strength of those presses, we'll probably get back all of them Right. I mean, you know, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Students are, can't they, destroy them. No, right? they are. They are hardy. Right. They're, they're, and that's what I again. I, we weren't obviously sure what to expect from this. And that's the part that has impressed me. One is the technical aspect and the precision. Two is the flexibility of both making them be portable and that we can use them for different printmaking processes. Yeah. And I've, I've just been- Especially in a pandemic where everybody is online. It's, you know, one of my fears is that the, the education of, well, my son, much less my students, their education is all gonna be in this, looking at this little box. Right. The fact that our students are able to actually make and have to, you know, solve sub problems and setting it up, all that physicality I think is critical to the creative process. I mean, I, yeah. I find right now a very difficult time for me to be creative because of the limitations of access to equipment. And these presses, it's really weird. It hits a sweet spot where it just solves so many uh, issues, so many problems. So um, yeah, the, the the difficulties of teaching at home, you know, they're 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 multifaceted. I'll have my daughter just kind of walk in and like you know, pop her head into the camera and like, oh, excuse me, guys. Um, uh, my where, son where, is where, running where around we? with his underwear, just in his underwear, <laughs> yeah. in the middle of meetings. But again, that adds to the difficulty on that end. But also, you know, I understand that some of these students are having a hard time. Some yeah. people may be depressed. Some people are obviously very concerned and worried. And so they're, they're not as, as involved in the work in, as they would be under optimal circumstances. I, I don't see how they can be, you know, and, and I, it, it took me a little while to kind of resolve that in my own head. Like um, I tend to be pretty intense like you uh, and I have expectations of my students. And when they don't meet that, I take it personally. I shouldn't, but I, I do. And I think the, by the time I got to the end of last spring, it, it kind of dawned on me just where most people are, the anxiety and the depression or the concern that they have and how that affects them. Because it's certainly, it's affecting me. Right, know? so I we mean, shouldn't compromise, I guess, but we need to also understand that Obviously, it's not the best of conditions, and so there are there are mitigating factors right. that come into play. But long term, this solution—I mean, short term—I think it's the best we could possibly yeah. come up with. Long term, I think it's going to be incredible. Um, you know, as I said earlier, the you know maybe the 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 worst case scenario is that they're not as good as the Vandercooks. Best case scenario is we have 27 presses now. Yeah. and you know you can do certain things on different presses. It'll allow you some some things it won't allow you, but having that option is just, it's huge. It's yeah, huge. Th th that's again, the, f the, f the flexibility that we have with them, both as making final results and for some preliminary things is good. I, I, I can't get it out of my head the, so when you, we, you and I were building these, the kits came uh, late August, and it's yeah. you and me working on these, um, in Bradley Hall and you start to unpack them. And I think you had mentioned this to me, just the care and the craftsmanship of how they built this and how they packaged it. It was just like, every time you opened the box, it was Christmas morning yet again. It's like you lay out all the different components, you follow the directions, the little tubes of, of, of glue. glue and the, the <laughs> Bulbarians and the, Oh, it was just. It was like opening, for me, it was like opening up, you know, when you get a new iPhone or something and you open up the box. Yeah. And then there's the little flap and under there's the, the, the headphones. And it was, it was fun. It was yeah. like, wow. And we, you respect something more when you see the care oh. and the precision, you know, right. that goes into it. And that's where, again, the whole process was I think just we fun. should. I think we should bring in the students to make the next set. 
because I think it's that understanding of the press of what it is as an object and the care and the engineering that went into this little thing that they just get and work with. But if they were exposed to that, I, I, I think that... Well, they would understand the mechanics of yeah. it better as well, literally. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I just, I can't get, th that That was a really great day. It was day. fun, yeah. yeah. It, it's a lot of work, but it was, it, was, it was satisfying after we figured out, you know, how to do it and stop throwing things against the wall when they were backwards and whatever. Right. <laughs> and I mean, I think ultimately the other component to this is these presses, not only do they feed what we need to do in our design classes or our art classes or our, our uh, um, art culture and media classes, but also it's like, talk about community outreach. You know, that's part of the component of Express Newark is I can now bring in people in a really, you know, from the Newark Public Library is we've done some workshops. I can now create, we can now create yes. workshops that we can bring in a whole new level of people. It's like, um, you know, silk screening being a more accessible process, this makes letterpress or any printing process much more accessible. We could apply that to that image workshop that we've been running. Yeah, it's a game students. changer for yeah. us. Um, it just makes us so much more flexible, so much more uh, amenable to the community. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah I, I see it as a win-win, as a temporary fix, if you will, and then as something that is an addition to the presses we have, to the hardware we have, whatever you want to call it, in terms of maximizing students' time in the classroom and facilitating them the opportunity to do more work outside yeah, of the Yeah, and to be fair, this was not our idea of the presses. It's Erin Beckoff's and her father. But, you know, every time I mention this to a dean or a someone in the chancellor's office, their eyes kind of, well, not their eyes because I, I wasn't in person, but their screens lit up, yeah. you know? I mean, it, 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 clearly they saw the short-term benefits. I think it's the long-term benefits that I'm so excited about. And that was brilliant on your part to, to realize that, well, hey, let's try those. And then we I'm, both you know, collectively realized the long-term benefits. And having the support of yeah. those people around campus that said, yeah, let's go with this, so. Yeah. yeah. Um, in terms of, you know, uh, a last thought, if you will, I think considering the fact that, you know, we're dealing with obviously this epidemic and we had to try to figure out a way to teach the printmaking class remotely, the fact that we were forced to think through this and to, and to find these presses is going to, going to be beneficial in the future for us in that, like you said, we now have more presses. So, you know, there's a little bit of something good coming out of this whole yeah. situation. Yeah. So, you know, we're, obviously we're doing the best we can, but at least we have presses now that we can utilize in the future. And allowing our present Express is the name of the, 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 the press downstairs, X Press. Um, allowing that to be part of our curriculum is key, right? Because I Express Newark and its community outreach is really and super important. But I think how you support that is through Rutgers students having the experience of using the facilities here. And so having you as a partner at Express and bringing in your classes combined with my, you know, opportunities in the graphic design area it allows us to expose students to this wonderful environment that we're part of. You know, we're very fortunate to have. And the more people I can get in there and get bitten by the letterpress bug, uh, yeah, it's... And that's what I like about what we try to do as a department. You know, we're trying to integrate the students, not just in the design or fine art side, but all of the students, be they you know, the videographers or the journalists and this and that into a much more collaborative and multidisciplinary mindset. And I'm really happy, you know, that just even in this little thing, you know, that we work together are working together, trying to figure these things out. How can we apply them to these other aspects of teaching? And I think that's a really wonderful thing um, that I see reflected again because of this crisis that we are working together. We're happy to work together. We're happy to share. 
and, 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 and so again, thank you. Thanks for, for meeting and thank talking you. about this. It's, it's, it's meaningful when everybody, you know, is invested in it, which, you know, I'm appreciative of.